it's almost like they know a secret, <laughs> right? They found the secret to life, and it's and it's like surfing on snow. His name is Fern. He's a film director, a storyteller. His job is to bring stories to life, to look inside and see what bigger truths lay beneath the surface. And his latest subject was snowboarding's original pioneer himself, Jake Burton. Hi, welcome to my turn. We have Fern, the director of Dear Rider, the Jake Burton story, and couldn't be happier to be here with you today, and welcome to Vermont. Thank you, Coxie. Uh... Great to be here. My first time in Vermont, and actually my first time being on this side of, of the interview ah, setting. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, so, so you get to um, a little payback, you know. Right. You get right. to you get to ask me all the tough questions now. Yeah, and you've taught me well from our uh, experience together. So great. Here we go. So I feel like we became fast friends when we first met, and it. And, it's been two years, but it went by so fast. Like, so what's your, besides the movie, what else have you done? Before I was directing, I was editing, you know, and that, that's how my career started. Uh, edited for 20 years, movies, documentaries, um, music videos, a lot, of, a lot of music videos. I did that and I started doing, um, uh, I got into feature films because that's what I wanted to, to do growing up. Uh, at least that's what, that's what I thought I, want, I, I you know, wanted to do. But once I started doing it, I hated working in film studios. Oh my God, it's like, it's a factory. It's a sweatshop of like movies, you know. And, um, and I had reached my goal and I was editing these, these feature films with, you know, big actors and stuff, and, and I was miserable, you know, and I got out. Hmm. Oh, this isn't for me. Um, and then I went back to documentaries, and uh, and that eventually led me here because I was working with uh, Red Bull on um, on a fix it job, right? And I met Ben Bryan, and we became really good friends, and he. Uh, suggested I direct a movie for, for, for them, which was supposed to be this like really small kind of documentary that was just based on like an archive fi film, you know? And he's like, well, you're an editor. I think you'd be great for it. Uh, but that, that, that project grew into something way bigger, you know? It's called Any One of Us. And, uh, and, um, and yeah, and then for the last five years, I've, I've been directing. You pitched Jake on doing his film, mm -hmm. and you weren't chosen. Mm -hmm. What what were you thinking? What was your thought process? What was your, you know, creating a movie basically and pitching Jake, and then not being a director? Well, the project was already being developed way before I even I even learned about it. You know. Uh, with uh, Ben Ben Bryan and Jake, yep. right? So they, they you know they had been going back and forth for like, even like a year, even before he even told me about it. Um, ben sneaky like that. He works on these projects, <laughs> and then at the right time he goes, "Do you do you like snowboarding?" Yeah. Um, so you, you know that the the film, any one of us, we were we had finished it, and uh, we we were like just like doing like the last bits, you know, like the final color and sound. And he tells me about about um, this project. And I remember exactly where I was. I was in my wife's art studio, and I, I was doing something there, right? And uh, and he's like, he's like, do you know who Jake Burton is? I'm like, ah, it sounds familiar. You know, I think I've heard heard the name. Um, and he's like, well, Burton snowboards. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, we're making a movie about 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 him and his his life. And I'm 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 thinking. Uh, yeah, I don't know what <laughs> what I would I could contribute to this. And he starts talking to me, and and in, I was after Miller Fisher, and he <clears> tells <throat> me, 
a little bit about what Jake had gone through with Miller Fisher, and then I told him that, you know, I'd, I'd do some reading. And um, so I started reading about Jake and, and looking at interviews and stuff, and and um, what, what hooked me, you know, what got me, were the note cards that he was writing, right? And I thought that was like, you know, a, vi a very powerful, like, cinematic thing that you can build a story around, right? This is this man need, needing to connect to the outside world, you know, being locked in his body, and and the need to connect, and the will to survive. I was like, yeah, I think I could do that. I think I could do that. And then and then, but the problem is, I I, I had the one movie that I had just finished, but that was it. And it, it still wasn't even done. So, and he goes, well, look, you, I mean, it's a super long shot. You're going up against these like really established directors and stuff. So what I did is I put together a proof of concept, right? Which is I went and I started basically like a short film, like a seven minute short film it ended up being. being. But I went and I, I got all the interviews and I got um, downloaded a bunch of stuff off, off the internet. But I also did a reenactment, you know, when I got an actor and I did this thing, this scene where uh, Jake is um, coming out of the Miller Fisher. Yeah. Um, uh, um, and, and, and it came out, I mean, it was a very emotional piece, right? right? And it was primarily focused on that. Um, but I was happy with it. And, and I think I tapped into something making it you know it's kind of this 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 spirit this 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 energy and but i knew it was a long shot yeah. i knew it was a super <laughs> long shot but um you know you give it your best shot right and then and then if you've done that then it's all good right you know if you don't get it, it there's, there's a million reasons why you don't get or get something right yeah. um a job an, an audition or an interview Sometimes it has nothing to do with you. But as long as you do the best you can, you know, then you feel good about yeah. it. And I, I did everything. You know, I, I treated it like, I treated that proof of concept like, you know, I put all my heart and soul into it. And then, um, so Jake was in town doing interviews and I, I went first, right? He, he, he was doing interviews um, with different directors. And so I got the first slot, <laughs> right? I had him real fresh in the morning, like 11 in the morning and went to the, his hotel and um, really nervous, I was super nervous uh, to show him the piece, right? And then, you know, we went up to his room and he was so nice. He was so <laughs> cool, man. And I think, I think he, he could tell I was nervous. So he was just trying to calm me down and chill me out and, and, and making me feel comfortable. And, um, and it did, it worked. So I, I relaxed and and I just kind of got into the whole, the whole spirit of it, right? And just, and I was, and I remember telling myself, you know, this is probably this might be the only time you get to hang out with Jake, <laughs> so just take him in and have a good time with it. And I did that, and I put on, I put on the proof of concept, and um, and I turned to him when when I like I glanced at, at at Jake during the emotional part, and he was like locked in, you know, super locked in, and and he was and he was tearing up. And um, and I felt great in that moment. I felt great because I felt like I connected with him, right? And and his crew, they they were they were smiling, and uh, we chatted a little bit. You know, it wasn't a long meeting. Um, told them a little bit about my movie that was coming out that day. Actually, we were flying to Austin because any one of us was premiering at, at South oh, By, yeah. right? Like, I had nothing out. Yeah. I had nothing that I can show yeah. him, right? It would, you know, I could send him a link of a movie that is going to come yeah. out, right? Um, but I left there feeling super excited, you know, at having met him and having lived through that experience. And and I was chalking it up to, you know, like a like good life experience, yeah. right? right? Yeah. And, and, a, and a learning moment. And... Um, and you, you know, I didn't get the job, right? But uh, but like I said, I felt. Oh, you know, on the way out, the best part was he gave me this uh, 
toilet, like a toilet paper yeah. with Trump's face on it. <laughs> and I was like, this guy is so awesome. And uh, I remember, and then at some point I had it in, in, in the bathroom <laughs> at our house. And then one day I went, I went in there and somebody had used it. <laughs> I guess it could totally, yeah, yeah. so I, like I took it and yeah. I put it away some, some somewhere else. Um, but yeah, so I, that was like my prize put possession was that Trump toilet paper. That's and um, and and I thought that was it. I really thought yeah. that was it. So the movie was getting started, and he he kept bringing your name up, and he kept saying, "I really like this guy Fern. I want him to be a part of this movie." And I was like, I didn't really understand the process. And I'm like, dude, he's a director. We have a director. Like what? And he, but he, he literally over and over kept saying, Fern needs to be part of this. And, um, and it worked out. And mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, the stars aligned and whatever happened, but he, he spoke very highly of you and you made a special impact with him. And I think it's really, truly special that you did his story and Dear Ryder. Thank you. Um, I remember, I remember Ben, periodically asking me would you consider editing would you can I'm like no no I mean look you you get one shot right and I know Ben mentioned that last night you know you, you got to make the most of that opportunity and and at that point I was like all right I've been editing for 20 years I mean I love editing but I really I really want to commit to this right and 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 I couldn't be one foot in, one foot out. So as much as I wanted to work on the on, on the project, I wasn't gonna help somebody else make a movie that in my heart I felt I could do better. Yeah. Right. So like, you know, then that the team that got that got they got hired um, is very talented. I thought it was a you know solid choice, especially based on resume, right? Um, so I knew uh, they re didn't really need me, right? Yeah. For one thing. Um, but, yeah, you know, they, what ended up happening is there was a, a conflict, you know, with the team that was hired because the director what was in, um, the, the, the director is in the DGA. Yeah. It's the Director's yep. Guild of America. And, and Red Bull's not, uh, they don't, they don't work with DGA affiliated directors. Um, so they could never work that out, you know, and it's an, it was an unfortunate thing for them. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then, um, so Ben told me, you know, it's possible we may be needing another director. Uh, right. And, and I was what, like, what were you, I was like, what were your thoughts or what was that? My thoughts were like, fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, you, you know, I, I thought that I could do a better job in the sense that. I could tap into Jake's humanity more. Yeah. Right? And I think as a storyteller, that's what I'm always trying to do is tap in, into people's humanity and what makes them human. Yeah. You know, the, because we're not perfect, right? None of us are perfect. And I think, I think the imperfections are what make us great and the imperfections are, are what people want to see and they want to and they want to learn about and that's all i'm interested in i'm interested in the imperfection i'm, in, I'm interested in the mess that's why right? you get along so good yeah yeah <laughs> right and 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 so you know i could care less about something being cool right? there's a million people out there that can do way cooler shit than i can um but as far as the humanity part of it um that's that's what I love. That's my passion, right? Um so, you know, he told me we 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 might be looking for a new a new director. There's some DGA issues going on. I'm like, well, I'm definitely interested if that were to happen. But then shortly after Jake got sick. Yeah. Right? And and it kinda all happened around the same time, you know, in the same period. Uh and and then, like shockingly, Jake passed in very short order, yeah. right? And 
and I really thought that the project, um, you know, wasn't going to happen at yeah. that point, right? Because Jake was such an integral part of of, of, of the project. Yeah. And um, but it was just such a sad time, and. And, and then I, I felt even more grateful for that one day, that one moment I had with Jake. But then Ben told me, ben, ben told me that, that the family, Donna and the boys still wanted to make the film. And then, he, and then they told me, then they want you to make it. And I was like, I don't even have to talk to them. <laughs> I don't have to pitch them. And they're like, I'm like, no, they, they, want, they, they want you, yeah. you, you know? And, uh, and I was all in, man. I was like, more than ever, you know, like I wanted to do it before, but yeah. like at that point, I was like, I know it's, I, and I know what to do with the story. Yeah. And know you know, Donna, Donna said the show must go on, and the family, you know, was was all in and hundred percent faith in you, and but so now you're stoked, and not so are the gears spinning on. The direction, or how you're gonna do it, or yeah, how you're gonna tell yeah. the story, and well, I the the first thing was I read the creative from the prior team, and there was so much work done, you know, with um, with Ben and Abby and Jake, and going through the timeline and like beating it out, and and like and Jake being very specific about when th things happen and how things happen, that when when I got on it, it was great to have that research because usually I'm I'm the one doing that research, right? And it was already done, so I felt like I was like way ahead of the game. But the creative had to be completely redone for for two reasons. For first of all, it was done while Jake was alive, and it was also somebody else's point of view, and it really didn't align with mine, right? Um, so we scrapped it, we scrapped it, and we came up with a new creative, a new story map, and um, and one that was kind of rooted in the u.s open right um and we but so we like hit the ground running we, we took the research and we created this this new outline that then and then we, we shared with hbo and we shared with the family and everybody got very excited and and then the next thing i know i'm in breckenridge with with you guys <laughs> yeah yeah so tell me when we met in breckenridge and you're gonna become mm -hmm. a snowboarder right and we were gearing up and in the condo, like what was going through your head as far as your first time snowboarding? I was terrified. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, oh. I was, it was really stressful, you know, because I'd never met you guys. So that in itself, you know, had had, a, had a, an amount of stress, you know, like, I hope it goes well. But then I'm like, but I'm supposed to snowboard as well? Oh my God. And I remember, you know, when we were in LA, everybody was like, getting your boards, going to the store, and and I was like, just go for me. I, yeah. I don't care what you just get me with what the, the, whatever you think is, is the right board. So Rose, Rose Core, my my best friend and, and editor, you know, she she like loves snowboarding. Like it's her thing, you know, it's her, pa it's her passion. And she goes and she gets me like all this gear and I'm like looking at it like terrified, like this is gonna be the end of me. And um, but then when when we went over there, I think the best part of that weekend was actually putting putting the board together. You know, what? I was just gonna say that, and I think we all feel it when you break out a new board and you're putting the bindings yeah. on. And I remember watching us and we're you know and putting the, trying the clothes on and whatever. But it's like suiting up for yeah. outer space or something. Yeah, it's like that yeah. scene in True Romance when and when they're like taking their guns out at the yeah. end. Yeah, and we like. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, that was fun, you know. That was really fun, like setting up the board, and and I didn't really realize the kind of implications of it all, but it was fun, you know. Um, as far as like what it means to to set up your board, um, and uh, but it was a cool bonding experience because that's when you and I had like a real first conversation. We're like, well, you do it like this, and put your foot there and, and just stand on it and go like this. So I was like doing that in the living room going, this is going to hurt. So then I remember we also just dropped you off with the instructor and we're like, see ya. And we went riding all day yeah, and we yeah, check yeah. in and like, he's, he's fine, he's doing okay. Yeah, and yeah. I remember, and this is I think a rite of passage, like working with us is you got to be a snowboarder, mm -hmm. right? So 
I think it was our first time really getting together the whole group, right? Mm -hmm. I remember sitting in the thing and just talking about Jake and the story and how it's going to kind of happen. And um, yeah, that was, I'll never forget that, man. It was like just everyone coming together. And I remember sitting like this and just talking and getting to know each other and then throwing some ideas around. And it's the one thing I was really impressed with, there was never any egos or from anybody from Red Bull Media House and HBO and our team. And it was like a, just a really cool experience, you know? Uh, and I don't know if that's similar to other job, like you were saying, like the, the big films are like a sweatshop type atmosphere, but I felt like this was the community and everything that Jake built and all this working together. It's rad. Yeah, it, that weekend was, was, um, you know, I'd never met you guys before, so yeah. I was like, wow, I hope it goes well, yeah. you know, and like, um, you know, help it make a good impression. And you, 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 you have those thoughts, right? But but then when when I when when I got there, it was very much like when I met Jake, right? Yeah. It was like everybody's <laughs> really cool and like, you, are you good? Yeah. And can we get you something? And and like this is how the snowboard wor works, and and it, and it felt like I was just in in like this little fraternity of like <laughs> of like really nice people, right? <laughs> and uh, it was you and Abby and George and and I don't know, it was it was just Timmy and it, you know, hey. It was fun seeing all you guys getting geared up. Yeah. And, the, and the, I was like, ah, oh, this is their lives, yeah. you know? And it's cool. It was cool for me to experience that because I got a sense of, of, of what, of what the, the, the life is like because I'm not a snowboarder, yeah. you know? So for me, it was like, it was a little peak, you know? But a, a, a lot of times that's all I need is just like a little glimpse, like a little peak, and then I, I can take it from there. And, uh, and, you know, setting up the board was great. Yep. That was super fun, and Rose was helping me, and you were helping me. That's the first time you and I kind of like ch chatted up a yeah. little bit, right? <laughs> um, but then the next day, you guys dropped me off yeah, with the like, instructor, yeah, <laughs> and he, uh, it was so awkward, man, because I was on the little kind of not even the bunny slope. It was just like this little thing yeah. where like a bunch of five-year-olds and they were like, shh, shh. And I was like falling and falling. I'm like, am I doing this right? And I was like falling, and these kids are like. Get out of my way, yeah. and, it, and um, so then we went from there to like the bunny slopes and stuff, and um, and the snow was hard. It just it was, that was miserable, yeah. but um, <laughs> but the the, the um, my instructor was super cool. His name was Sam, right? Um, and uh, we got to talking, and he was like, and you know, we started talking about the film, and he was like, oh my god, that's great. I love Jake. I love Burton. And um, and he, he he and then at some point he goes, he goes, do you know why, um, they um, skiing was invented, and uh, and I'm like no why he goes to get from point A to point B, <laughs> I'm like cool he goes you know why snowboarding was invented I'm like no he goes to have fun yeah <laughs> I'm like oh, okay uh, tell, let me know when the fun starts because yeah. <laughs> I'm not having a lot of it right now but um but it was cool it was it, it, you know and um. But, you know, I, I, I didn't get to do it enough where I, like, or like I had that breakthrough moment yeah. at, at that point. But, um, but it, it was great. And then I would see you guys, you know, at, like... Like, see ya. <laughs> yeah. At, <laughs> see you at dinner. See you at dinner, you know. <laughs> but it was, a lot of, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So, how did you fit 65 years of Jake's life into 90 minutes? That, that's a big question. That's a loaded question. I think um, um, the first part is the plan. You need a plan, right? And that was our story map. This, you know, in the 20 years that I that I was I was editing, very rarely would a director or producer come in with a plan, right? You know, they would they would say they're like, "Oh man, this fucking movie's awesome. We got this great idea. We got this great scene. This." This, this guy did this crazy shit and then it's such a big story and I'm like cool and, and they're like yeah here you go 500 hours and I'm like that's the plan it's really cool <laughs> yeah. and then and then I'd have to figure it out right I had to figure it out and 
and the worst part is and then you know you don't get a writing credit you don't get anything and then they go on and the movie's great and and, and then like my editor's right there st st stand up for a second <laughs> you know and so I vowed if I'm ever in, in that position I'm gonna have a plan for whatever editor I'm working with um, because I don't want to put anybody else in that position right um, so you need the plan right I need to have a vision and you need to be able to articulate it I need to be able to it, for it, it to be actionable right um, by that I mean within a budget yeah right <laughs> um, so that's what we did that's what we did for starters so that that already we we had like an idea of what we wanted to do um, and and we already knew what Jake felt were the most important parts of, of his story so we focused on that and then and then that was kind of like our guide um, but you know no no plan survives first contact with the enemy yeah right uh, <clears throat> so that's true of every movie but then we shot the US Open which was our first scene in February 2020 and I remember like hearing COVID and and thinking what is that the first time I heard about COVID was on the plane ride sorry on, 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 on the car ride to the Breckenridge Hotel right in January I hadn't even heard of yeah, it like coronavirus I hadn't heard I was of like it. what yeah, is that yeah. and then um, so our whole plan like a lot of our plan we had to we had to like redo in the beginning in the very beginning of our process yeah. right uh, because three weeks later af after the US Open like we couldn't leave yeah. we couldn't leave our homes yeah so you had a chance to interview in person probably a dozen or more t old team riders new team riders people friends what does any of them anything strike you from meeting those people and in, in the in the in person interviews anything jump out at you from that part yes yes a lot of things um this this kind of this kind of um you know falls in line with the main theme for me of the film which is this idea of of community grieving right um because those interviews that we shot in Vail, they were only a few months after Jake had passed. So everybody was still super raw, you know, and, and, and grieving, right? But they had each other and they had that, that community and they had that event, which I, I came to learn over the next year, you know, all, all the, the stuff that Jake had to go through to, 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 to get it up on its feet and then make it grow. Um, I, had, I didn't really have a sense of it at that point. Uh, but I just remember how, what an influence Jake was in all of their lives. Even if, even if, like, e even the 16 year old writers, right? Yeah. Who were like there for only like the second or third time. Um, they, they just loved Jake. They just <laughs> loved him so much, right? The idea of Jake, you know, and like, and like, and like, for some of them, the coolest part was getting to the bottom of their run and seeing Jake clapping yeah, for them. Yeah, he's always there. Yeah, yeah, and it, and 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 I was like, I was like, what an amazing thing to have such an influence, you know, on so many people, so many people, right? Have that big of a circle of influence, and he did. He had a global influence, yeah. right? But somehow he made it feel very personal as well, right? And I think that's a reflection of of, of who he was. But I remember, I remember um, getting a sense of how much people loved him, right? Which was a problem because as true as that was, it wouldn't make for a very great documentary <laughs> if everybody's just going, yeah. dude's awesome, he's so great. <laughs> so I was like, okay, no, I get it, I get it, I get it. And but, but so, I, you know, I had to... I had to I, I had to add a lot of questions in in there that were more contextual, more about the life and snowboarding and everything, and make it more personal to them. But the people that we interviewed in Vail that were that were you know good friends with Jake, like Terry A and and 
Mark Heingardner and, and um, Kelly Clark. Like you can tell when they came in, they, they, they were, I don't want to say guarded, but they were already emotional. They were thinking, oh, this is going to be heavy. So I, I just tried really hard to just get them to calm down and like, and like, oh, you know, we, we could have fun doing this. You know, we could tell some cool stories yeah. and, and have fun with it. And, and I think my, my, my focus was on, was on getting, getting them to, you know, help us understand who Jake was as, as, a, as a friend, as like a, a mentor, as a, as a boss. And um, and and I, I think we were we were able to do that to a certain extent, but 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 that grief and that hurt and that sadness is the subtext of all of those interviews, right? And I think um, and subtext is is everything to a movie, right? Yeah, like you never talk about what the subtext is, but it's there, right? And I think um, that sense of loss that sense of, of again grief right right uh, I never mentioned it I never asked directly about about that um, but to me it was always there right and um, and there was this um, there's a scene that didn't make the movie but Donna and Taylor are in a, are in a chairlift and um, and they're talking and Donna's talking about this idea of, of, of grieving and how society doesn't let people grieve, doesn't give people enough time to grieve. It's just like, you know, they want you to move on and, and, and you know, have a, have a stiff upper lip and just kind of get on with life. But, you know, like, that could be very damaging, right? And, and um, that is very damaging. And it leaves, it leaves wounds that don't heal, right? Um, so she was super grateful that that everybody was there and everybody was supporting each other you know not just the family but each other you yeah because they, they they love jake so much mm. right he's su such a big part of their lives and um i don't even know what the original qu question was coxie but um oh the the, the 30 hours the like the, like like the, 60 years into 90 minutes yeah and then also the in-person interviews mm -hmm. which you would normally do but now the pandemic hits yep. and some of the the biggest for lack of better words interviews with donna and the family and jake's sisters mm -hmm. were done remotely yep. so what there's another curveball mm -hmm. thrown in, in in making Dear Ryder. What was that like? That was, um, you know, different because it's great talking to you, right? And I'm feeding off your energy and I'm looking at you, right? And um, that's everything when you're doing an interview, yeah. right? You have to be in the moment and you have to connect. I was like, oh, I'm home gonna connect through zoom right yeah. and cameras i'm not even I'm not even there and and talk about such such you know difficult stuff um but it turned out great it turned out really well because you know we had a great team in um at uh at burton yeah that stepped up you, you know alex adrian put it all together i remember he was he, he was like um he, we uh we we scouted on facetime yeah. he was like going through the house what do you think of this yeah. what do you think of that and i'm like yeah that looks good to yeah. me i'm like how about outside yeah. you, you, you know and like and like we went down into into you know like the tunnels yeah. and all that stuff and uh i think i think we ended up with some great locations but that's how we scouted it you yeah. know like from my little office in ball heights yeah in east la which was like um like another universe away from where we're sitting now um and um and and he lit it beautifully and technically it was perfect and we just set up i think they were looking at me on a laptop it like a zoom yeah, call yeah it was like yeah. a super elaborate zoom call and um and we had like a an iphone that was hung right yeah. over outside of the frame and that's how we communicated um and uh yeah we, we spoke to donna right there and it was 
And it's such a powerful thing, you know. But I find that it, it works really, it works a lot better if the person you're gonna interview with, like you're able to connect with them first. But by that, but so by the time we we interviewed Donna, George, Taylor, and Timmy, like we had been making the movie for like six months. Even if it was remotely, you know, there was contact. You know, we would talk and we would show them stuff. And um, and so I felt we were ready for it, you know, and and all the things I was worried about, connecting and engaging, none of that mattered, yeah. you know, because it was, you know, technically there were there were there were no issues, and and artistically it looked great, and I knew I knew we, we were in, in in great shape, and and um, and we just talked, and we just talked about about life and, and Jake and and their family and the sport and the business and all that and, and it was really great and and you know it's such a powerful family, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Such a powerful family of funny and <laughs> idiosyncratic and 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 so handsome, everybody's so good looking. I was like, wow, this is gonna be They're great. really, really good looking. <laughs> They're really really good looking, yeah, like movie star looks. Um, so I was I was super happy with the way it all turned out, and uh, and I don't think anybody would guess that it was done remotely. You yeah. know, and I know we're not the only people that did it. A lot of movies that were made at that time had to like fi figure it out, but um, but we figured it out on our own. Yeah. Right? We made our own. We did our own version of it. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I, I don't. Ever, I don't want to do that again. Yeah. But it worked out. Yeah. It worked out for that. I've just. I'm amazed at the process of making a movie. And we used to have a, a logo called the Process Logo that would mm -hmm. kind of remind us of the process of building cool clothes and boards and whatever. But the detail and I I think with my contribution going through some of the pictures and and I had um, I, you know, I had my phone with, you know, twenty thousand pictures and then I had Jake's phone. Mm -hmm. And so I went through mine first and shared, and then when I turned Jake's phone on and then had it in my hand, that was a big, big, heavy moment. Mm -hmm. But seeing the, his spirit and the funniness and you know all the different pictures and video clips and, but I don't know how you managed to go through them all. I mean, I think me personally it was like 40, 50,000 photos and then videos and then how many hours of interviews and how many hours of audio and video and mm -hmm. to, again, put Jake's life into 90 minutes in a beautiful way. Mm -hmm. The process is um, really important to me. I, I have my own process and I love that, that the process was a big part of Burton yeah. and Jake's philosophy because my, my process for filmmaking is very, very specific. Right, and there's a lot of there's a lot of room to improvise within it, but it's this is the process. And in Breckenridge, that was my main thing was how, um, having you guys understand what my process was because I wanted you to know where I would be mentally during the whole time. So this is the process, to, you know, and I know you know it. But the first step is is figure out what story you're telling, right? Yeah. Like what's the story you're telling, and that's hard. Because that's, like you say, it's a life, you know, and like, what's the story you're telling? The second part is make it make, make, it make sense, right? And, and that's harder than the first one, right? And, that, and, and so what happens after you make it make sense is just that. You make it make sense. <laughs> but it's not a movie. It's actually super, super boring, right? And hard to watch. But it makes sense, like, I get it. That happens, and that happens, and that happens, and that happens. But it's like a Wikipedia page, if you, if you will. But, uh, or you, can, you articulate what the movie's about, right? And then the third part of the process is the prose to poetry. That's when it all comes together. That's when you, like, I don't, you know, to make this make sense, I don't need this line anymore, or I don't even need this scene anymore, or I don't even need this whole section in, 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 anymore. And it becomes, it becomes poetry, which what, is what film is, right? It says, is this is this kind of marriage of, of visuals and sounds and thoughts and ideas and and tonalities and and 
stuff that I love, right? But that's like the dessert, right? So um, a lot of filmmakers want to get to the dessert before they even eat their meal, right? And people get, and that 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 I think comes from you know everybody ha having editing software on their phone now, right? Oh yeah. And like, and and on their computers and, and they, they get like a cool song and some cool images, they put it together. They're like, I'm a filmmaker, yeah. oh my God, I'm so good. <laughs> um, and, and, and everybody, uh, producers too, they, they're, they're like, everything is money, right? Money, money, money. Um, so they want it to look great, like the first week you're editing. So I always tell people, it's gonna look like shit for a long time. Yeah. And it's supposed to look like shit for a long time, right? Because we're not, we're not you, um, I'm like really strict about not polishing up something that isn't right yet, right? Because yeah. I, that, that was my, I struggled with that a lot because people would make me do that. Like, you want me to, you want me, this isn't good. And they're like, yeah, but throw some music on it and stuff. So that that's the process, right? And 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 I drilled down with you guys. This is what it's gonna be like. And the other thing that was, was really important was the movie I felt needed to be in Jake's words as much as possible. So, so the process was, um, you know, the practical part of the process began with like making a radio e edit and what that is is just an audio only edit of the film in Jake's voice right and and putting all the pieces together so so it's almost like a podcast right and um and once we had that and that took a very very long time we were then we started like what are the appropriate, what's the appropriate imagery that would go? Through? Yeah. And, and it wasn't like, what's the best Im imagery? It's like, it's like, what's the right imagery, right? Just to get it up on its feet, right? Like to have it kind of like, all right, it starts starting to feel like something. Again, like don't look for the best stuff. Yeah. Let's just make it like make sense. And, um, and you know, I try and stick to that as much as possible because it's always worked for me, right? And and you know in life you always want to impress people you always want people to like be psyched with what you're doing and and get on board with it so it takes a lot of i don't know it, it's hard to like let people know that it's going to suck for a long time yeah but trust me it's <laughs> yeah. going to get it's going to get better when it needs to get yeah. better yeah i remember you just you were saying just wait and like this is so cool and you're like Dude, this isn't even cool. Like, yeah, yeah, wait, yeah. wait, wait. Yeah. Well, the other part of the process is you, but but because because <laughs> I was um. I don't know snowboarding, right? I don't know the culture. I don't. I don't. I don't know. The the minutia of, of it, right? Um. Rose, she's a snowboarder. She yeah. loves snowboarding, but she doesn't really know Burton, right? Um. The the company, the family, the culture. So. I just, like remember I would send you no I'd send yeah. you clips and like and like these 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 little sequences um just to get your first impression, yeah. right? To, like, am I am I going the right direction? Am I not? And then and then and then you're like, I'll hit you right back. And then you you, you would uh you would zoom me like half an hour later and you had like like a drink in your hand. You were like, Oh dude, it's so good, or it's so good, or you're like, no, nah, I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> Um, but you, but you and I didn't always agree. Right. Yeah. You, right. you hated the Fiona yeah. Apple song. Yeah, I did. You like? For the record, I hated it. But like, I love it now. Yeah, you're yeah. like, what is that? What is that? I'm like, I'm like, trust me, it's gonna work. And you're like, no. What did you call it? You like? You said, I said this isn't Lil Affair. It's <laughs> Jake's <laughs> Jake's yeah. story. I'm like, dude, trust me, man. It's gonna work out. It's gonna work. But out. I, you, you would send me the 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 edits, mm -hmm. and I thought like, if Jake and I were together, we would have our tequila and orange juice and sit there and talk about it and whatever so I would get in that mind space and mm -hmm. then sometimes if it was the long edit I would be really in that mind space right, you know? yeah. and then I remember making notes and then I'd call you and then we'd talk and share and then the next day I'd look at the notes and like the last few like I'm like what, I was what like, did oh, I write? yeah but, but it, it was so useful to me Coxie <laughs> to have you uh, be that person in the process you know um so valuable so valuable and you and i had our own thing you know um outside of the kind of normal lines of communication yeah, right yeah. um 
it, it's all trust building. Yeah. Right. It's all yeah. trust building, and 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 um, I'm so grateful that you and I were able to build that trust e even through Zoom, right? E e yeah. Even even remotely. Um, and you know, one of the things that I noticed about Jake was how vulnerable he got as he got older. How much more he um, kind of um, at least from what I can tell, you know, like opened up, yep. right, right, emotionally. Yeah. And um. And and I really respected that. And and so I think for me it was like, wow. So that the Jake who was like super kind of brash and young and irreverent, not to get ever lost that, right? But I'm like, how how did he how did he become the Jake on on the NPR podcast? Yeah. Who like I mean when I listened to it. I was driving like I pulled over, you know, because I was so, I was just so moved by what he was saying, what he was describing. And I got very emotional listening to it. To it, and that's when I got the idea for the proof of concept, oh, yeah. how to do it. Yeah. Um, so much passion in his voice, and so much pain. Yeah. You, you know, and so much he wanted to do with the time he had left. Right. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Like, I could sense that, and um, <clears throat> and so I was like, oh, I, I need to figure out how that person got to be this person. Yeah, and he 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 squeezed every second out of every minute, out of every hour of every day. And I remember somewhat recently, I I said something about like looking forward to going to bed, and it's like you know clean sheets and whatever. And he looked at me like I was crazy. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, dude, you look forward to going to bed. And I'm like, don't you? He's like. Hell no! Like he didn't want to miss a thing, you know. And it's yeah. it's pretty pretty amazing and inspirational, like that hustle, hustle, go, go, go. And yeah. Sometimes exhausting, but always always fun and always doing it, you know. I'm I'm with you, Coxie. I I, I like some like around six o'clock. I'm down thinking about oh, sleep's gonna be so good tonight. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch a movie at seven. Yeah, exactly. Nine o'clock, yeah. right? You know, I'm like planning sleep like yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah. Um, you know, when I, I told Donna earlier, if, when, I, when I think about how different the experience would have been if I had made the movie with Jake, yeah. like side, side by side, it would have been that. I wouldn't have been able to keep up with no, him. No, I'd be yeah. like, oh, he would have fired me yeah. because I wouldn't have partied. I yeah. wouldn't have I've hung out. And, <laughs> and you're like, this guy sucks, man. He wants to sleep. It's 10 o'clock. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that part, that lust for life, yeah. you know, uh, I've never seen it in anybody, no, I any, anybody, either. anybody else, you know. The other thing, too, I noticed, uh, and I think we all f discovered new things about Jake, but he was the same 40 years ago, and like a prankster and a wise guy and a hustler and sports fan and everything, and it really comes through in, in Dear Rider, like, um, and I think it's a mm -hmm. attribute to him as a person, but then, you know, we talk about the community and it really is, and I think you've said it, and I think you've seen it and feel it. Like, he didn't just bring us the snowboard. He showed us, like, his way of life, and we're all like, hey, mm -hmm. this is kind of cool. I want to, I kind of want to live like this, too, you know? And, yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know, you know, I talk about Jake like I know him, and, like, uh, and, and in a sense, I think I do, right? But, but I wish I had known him more, right? And spent some some real time with him. I know the movie would have been different, you know, and I think different in better ways. Um, but I feel like like I connected with him the one time that we met, and and and. But. I, also, there's a part of me who wanted to fit Jake in, into the narrative that I was trying to tell, right? And again, in your 90 minutes, you know, how you fit a life in 90 minutes. Um, so it's a balancing act, right? Right? It's, uh, it's like a puzzle. Um, so, you know, there's a Jake that, there's a Jake that um, I was crafting in my mind with Rose and with Ben right that would work 
as as movie Jake, right? Um, if you will. But then, like, I really leaned on you guys to make sure that 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 the, the Jake that you knew intimately, that you laughed and cried with, like that that Jake, yeah. was the Jake that that we were we, we were portraying in the film. Yeah. And uh, and without you, I, I wouldn't we wouldn't. Well, you and the family actually wouldn't have been able to get to that point, right? We would, we would have been stuck with movie Jake, right? right? He'd probably um, like that better, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, like you guys, um, and you guys were very encouraging to go down the dark paths, you, you know, like, like tell the story, like tell that real story. Our 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 first cut was a little too, like, it was a little too soft. Yeah, and I remember. Um, George called me after the very first one. He's like, dude, I don't know. Like, what do you think about that? Something at the very beginning? And I'm like, dude, I don't know. And we were both like, like, should we really say what we feel? And you were always so encouraging. Like, you got to tell us how you feel. So we kind of took the gloves off and let her rip like Jake would. And I think, um, I think, you know, the, the respect that you and Ben and, everyone had for the family and emotionally um even to look at it at it and then give feedback and it was really special and there wasn't nothing was forced and and your respect of the emotional part of the whole process was uh, really nice and really special um because it was hard man you mm -hmm. know yeah and there was times where it's like you couldn't watch it that moment or whatever right. and um but i think it's like i said it's a we all worked really good together, and mm -hmm. and I think um, I think you made a hell of a movie. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I do feel blessed yeah. having met having met Donna. Yeah. You know, I feel like she contributed and is contributing this um, this life force to me. Yeah. That 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 I'm gonna take with me forever, keep with me, and um, man, she trusted us with this story. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, she trusted us to tell a story about the man she loved, the yeah. father of her children, the her life partner. Man, I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine that. You, you know, and um, I uh, I knew it was a big responsibility, and you can't think about that. You know, every single moment of every day while you're working out on it but um that was never far from my mind yeah you know and uh and then last night i got a sense again you know of and was reminded of how important the film is for this community and this community is like vast right i mean there's the family but it just it's just like that energy that life force it's like pulsates you know yeah. and and it and it and it's felt all over the world right the carpenter life force yeah um, but ha having having her uh it's just like be real encouraging you know and like tell the story like don't shy away from anything um you know and telling us that that's what jake would have wanted you, you know we're just like and we had a mission, you know, and Rose and and Ben and me and the rest of the create creative team. We were so dialed in, you know. And we did it during COVID. It's, it's yeah. like it's like well, every the, the world's like God going crazy. We get to tell Jake's story every day. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you know, and um, and that in itself it was a blessing because instead of like reading all this awful shit every single day you know we're we're, we're tapping into jake's life yeah. you know and 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 it got it got, a, it got me specifically through a difficult time time and um and and yeah i'm super grateful for all for all of it for donna and for george and taylor and timmy's support and encouragement yeah. throughout the whole process so donna when i told her we we're doing this my turn episode she was like you gotta have good questions, Cox. And I'm like, <laughs> like hard hitting, 
what's your favorite ice cream? A favorite ice yeah. cream? And she was like, God, so she's like, you need to ask like something like, how do you fit 65 years into 90 <laughs> minutes? So that was her, her question. And I think it was a really good one, but she's always yeah. like a, the smartest one in the room, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I try not to eat ice cream because, you know, I'm not supposed to eat dairy. Yeah. <laughs> That's like be a cake. But vanilla? Can't is that keep... weird? But vanilla is my favorite. No, that's such good, a vanilla dude. answer, right? I had a turkey plain bagel with plain said, cream cheese I, yesterday. It's I thought you were going to say plain. you had a yeah. turkey ice cream because they have yeah. that in, yeah. in, in LA. <laughs> they have everything in LA. You have yeah. turkey ice cream. Um, that's, yeah. yeah. By the way, I've been eating no, nothing but carbs here. Yeah. Join the club. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got the My Turn notebook there. What you got going on that? Well, so far I only have Fern's turn. Um, I kind of like the sound of that. Fern's, Fern's turn. turn, yeah. Um, yeah, so what are the themes, Coxie? Well, you, you laid out three of them earlier. Process is one of them. Yeah, right? yeah. And like, I think that that's a big one for Burton, but also for you and your business, and mm -hmm. it probably should be for a lot of, a lot of businesses. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's everything, right? Yeah. Um, wow. You like that? Yeah, man. <laughs> the community of snowboarding. Yes. Right. Which I didn't even know there was a community of snowboarding. I just saw people <laughs> snowboarding. Yeah. Right. So I didn't know there was a community. I didn't know any, anything about that. And, um, you know, I think that's why I was, uh, I guess I was a good choice for the film because I didn't have a I don't have a bias, right? I'm not team this or team that, yeah. and you know, I don't have a favorite snowboarder or a favorite mountain or anything like that, right? Um, I thought I was your favorite. You're my favorite, okay. yeah. <laughs> my fa <laughs> um, uh, so for me, it was just like everything was new, and I was super curious, and and I wanted to learn everything, and and you, you know, I I dove into this idea of like well who who are these people you know who are these people that snowboard who are these who are these these people that that kind of um um form this community of snowboarding that that in a lot of ways jake was kind of the leader of right and um and you know what i what i learned is 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 they're, they're like-minded people, right? And they come from all over the world and it's very diverse, right? Men, women, all races, right? Like, you know, but they fall in love with this idea of like expression and freedom and having that lust for life, right? And it's almost like they know a secret, <laughs> right? They found a secret to life and it's, and it's like surfing on snow, right? And I was like, oh, that's really cool. You know, like, like it's, and, and, and they love to share it and they want more people to be, and it's not like, it's not like a closed community. It's very much an open community, right? right? And they want everybody experience that freedom and that and that um and that thrill but also that kind of spirituality you know that a lot of the writers talked about and um and you have your like super sporty snowboarders you know and the, and the flips and the spins and all that and then you have you know like jeremy jones and Hiking up and I, so I'm, I'm then you have groomer guy. Yeah, groomer guy. And yeah, yeah. I was like, what is grooming? Yeah. I had to figure. I had to learn what that what that was. So, so like, so like all, but like at the end of the day, they all they all love it, right? And and and, and it's their passion, and it's and it's what they want to do every day, right? Right. Um, but then you get you need to dig deeper, and you realize that there's factions, right? And there's these people, mm. and then and then there's these pe people, and then and then and then so very early on in the what what story are are we telling? the history of snowboarding told through Jake Burton's life, you know, uh, through his eyes, right? 
you know, other people may have different versions of, of this story, how it began, and they do, right? Because it's their life experience. It's, it's specific to them and all the other different companies and, 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 and stuff. But this is Burton's, Jake's, and Burton Snowboard's history of snowboarding, right? And, uh, and, and that is a very specific community inside of a larger community. Yeah. And, and, and it was great to meet and talk to guys that were there from the very beginning, you know, up, and then talk to like these young teenagers who are like, they're yeah. like just being part of it for the first time. And, um, and, but there's something that connects them all that, that is hard to put my finger on. But I think it's, I, th I think it's, um, you know, a lot of it has to do with Jake. A lot of it has to do with his, the DNA that he imprinted on the sport, right? And, and the passion that, that he lived his life with, with you know, and, uh, and how much he cared and loved the, loved the sport. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The man loved snowboarding. I mean, he rode 100 days a year. Yeah, and do rain, any... snow, yeah, yeah. ice. That's amazing. Worst conditions. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Every time he was stoked afterwards. Yeah, and I think um, and so there's not a filmmaking community, per se. You know what I mean? There's not really, and there's not, and and if there is, they don't like have each other's <laughs> back. Let me tell you that, right? In in any real way. But this is like, even the even the competitors, maybe except Sean, right? When 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 they finish, <laughs> yeah. they're like, they they want each other to do well. Yeah. They're like hugging each other, yeah. like yeah, man, fuck yeah, it's great, you know. Yeah. And and, uh, and it's very unlike other sports, yeah. right? And you want to, you know, there's no there's no mamba mentality, right? It's more is more like like we're we're family. Yeah. And uh and I think the sense of family and the sense of camaraderie and 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 full throated did I say that full throated support? Yeah. Right? That they have for each other and 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 the support I think comes through. And the US Open, I'm so glad we shot the US Open because that scene at the end when everybody's approaching the yeah. pipe. You know, Coxie, I was in Vail, I was um, doing the interviews in that in that condo. Oh yeah. The whole time yeah. I was in that condo, and I I would look out the window, and everybody seems to be having a lot of fun. Oh yeah, I'm you like were in stuck the, in there. I was yeah. stuck in there. I mean, not stuck. Right. I was in there yeah. working, yes. having a great time. Yes. But uh, um, but I but so the only time I got to like go out and actually see snowboarding, was, was that day, and, and like and like we go out there, and I get to the, to the, to the half pipe. And five minutes later, like they all do that. Oh yeah. And I'm thinking, like, this is awesome. This happens all the time. Yeah, you thought that was normal. Yeah, that, that, yeah. that was like every day. That's yeah, like, this no. is cool, yeah. man. <laughs> and uh, and then, and then that happened, and I left. Yeah. So the, the only real snowboarding that yeah. I saw was yeah. the was that poach. Well, that was special. That's for yeah. sure. But I mean, if there's like a visual kind of representation of the community, I I would say is that. Yeah, you know what? Those were team riders from different brands, different eras, and some of the people have never been in a half pipe for 25 years. Nobody fell. Nobody fell. Yeah, it's I was talking to crazy. Mike, Mark, yeah. Mark Heingartner, and he was, yeah. and he was like, "Nobody fell. I, I didn't fall." Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, uh, and uh, there's this shot in the movie after Mark's smiling, and I'm like, and like you were just psyched that you didn't fall, yeah, right? Exactly. That's why you're smiling. Totally. <laughs> um, but I think, I think. Um, at least for me, that 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 scene it like encompasses the community yeah. and what it means to be a snowboarder, yeah. especially a snowboarder at that level, you, you know. And his vision for surfing on snow, I always knew it could be a sport. Yeah, he was right. Yeah, he was so right. He was more right than he than he yeah. even knew. Yeah, and the other thing is that blows my mind is like Mark McMorris and all the riders after like a crazy. Uh, competitive season, they fucking still go snowboarding all the time. You know yeah. what I mean? We're like, I think a lot of pro athletes, you know, the hockey players go golf all summer mm -hmm. or the, you know, people take time away, but it seems like the snowboarders at the pro level and that community, as we said, like, 
fucking love it, you know? Yeah, I think, I think, and I'm just speculating on what I, I heard is that um, training is hard and competitions can be a grind. So they don't, in their time off, they don't go and, and sit on the beach or go to Cabo. What they do is they go and find, they go in the back country yeah. to recharge, yeah. Yeah. right? And to stop worrying about spinning and yeah. doing all that stuff and, and to reconnect with why they love it. And, and, um, and that's cool, right? Because that's also different yeah. from, from other sports, yeah. you, you know, is, is that, is that there's different aspects of snowboarding. Yeah. And, and, and I think a lot of them reconnect and that, that's idea of re reconnecting with their love for the sport. They, they, it's very important to them. Yeah. So Jake and I would, we were kind of like Tommy boy together on the road and we'd what does argue. That mean? And, what does that mean? Well, the movie, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's, you know, there's a big guy and a smaller guy and they argue <laughs> all the seen. time. And, okay. But so we would, we would be, you know, ornery or he'd be pissed or I'd be pissed. And if we were going to resort and it might be like I parked in the wrong place or I'm like, dude, don't tell me how to drive or whatever. But we would get on that lift no matter what was on our minds or his mind. And he would look over and he'd be like, Coxie, we're snowboarding today. And we'd just, you know, do this or high five. And he'd just smile. And then after one run, he was straight for the next three days and like it was that passion is mm. pure and it was like a cleansing thing and I think we all feel it like you know you get to the top of the hill or the mountain and just look around and just take you know yeah. take it in and um instead of just having to having to do it or having to you know take time and smell the roses but yeah those must be great memories yeah for sure man <laughs> What, what do you miss about Jake most? Everything. Everything. Yeah, he was, like, kept me on my toes for sure, but just his energy and passion and spirit and, you know, watching football games and whatever. It was always an adventure, for sure. And, uh, yeah, I'd do anything to have him back. Yeah. I'd love to have watched the football game with him. <laughs> Well, there's a spot you can see on the carpet where he sat, and it's literally worn out from him <laughs> jumping up and down and moving and whatever, but there's all kinds of those things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he loves sports, huh? Oh, yeah. Competitor, always, everything, everything. But you captured it, man. You captured his spirit and his life, and I think it's cool that it's not just another snowboard movie. It's not just a, like a movie about Burton. It's about his life. And um, I think people that either don't like snowboarders or snowboarding would watch it and kind of get it. And I also feel that someone just cruising through HBO Max, mm -hmm. HBO Max, um, and stopping on that film and know nothing about our industry it's a fucking good movie, man. And I think, I, I honestly feel that. And after last night, seeing the reactions and seeing how happy people were after the movie, and it's, it's great. I hope so, you know. Um, you do sometimes make a movie with an audience in, in, in mind. Yep. Right? So for me, the audience is me, right? So I try, to, I, I try and make so something that will entertain me and that hopefully will entertain other people, right? But I'm not a snowboarder, right? So... Um, we are now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, not quite, but... Uh, um, so, yeah, try and tell a movie that is relatable to a lot of, a lot of people. But that's something that people say a lot, you know? Like, how do, how do you make a movie that, that can have a broad appeal, mm -hmm. right? So, here's the secret. You have to make it very, very specific and very, very personal, right? Which is counterintuitive. You're right. Because the notes that you get are make it more general, yeah. make it more broad. But, but you know, the, the, again, back to subtext, right? right? 
like what is what does a person want what do they need what are their demons you know what are they struggling against yeah. right? the more specific you could be about those things the more it feels like a human story the more people relate you know like uh you know i think people like all kinds of movies and for different reasons but i i think the great movies what they have in common is they're very specific yeah and and they touch there's a humanity that's revealed that people relate to right and uh and so my focus was always on that like be specific be personal have a point of view and articulate it in a way that people can understand it yeah and and when when you do that right i feel that you can have somebody you know who's never been on a snowboard and might not ever get on a snowboard watch the movie and 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 feel like man i'm gonna i need to figure out what my passion is because yeah. i'm like low on passion right now <laughs> i need I, I i need to get up in the morning and have that that lust for life that jake has yeah. because from where i'm sitting it looks really awesome mm -hmm. and i'm missing and i'm missing that right and i think if uh you know, it'd be great if a 12-year-old were to watch the film and, and get psyched. But it would be even more great if a 60-year-old saw it and be like, I got to find my inner child. Yeah. You know, yeah. I got to go back to being that that little punky, irreverent <laughs> yeah. 6-year-old who's yeah. always like, yeah. you know, pulling pranks on, on his sisters. <laughs> you know, I got to get back to being that, that guy, you know, because I miss that guy. Yeah. You know, and I know he's in here somewhere. And uh, and I gotta I gotta pull him out, you know, because <laughs> clock's ticking. Yeah. I think old, Jake always had a sense that the clock was ticking. Oh yeah. Yeah. You, you know, and he wanted. He wasn't gonna like not do everything he wanted to do no, at the he time did he had. <laughs> That's for sure. It's weird, like talking about somebody that you know intimately, and and I I met once, but I, I talk about him like 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 I know him. You but, do know him. But that yeah, happens, you yeah. know, when you make a movie about somebody, yeah. and you really commit to, to 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 the process you know and to trying to understand them so yeah so the film's been out for about a month on hbo max and november 9th it launched and um it's pretty cool man the world can see it yep um it's amazing going on the hbo menu and actually and it's real and it's yeah, there right yeah yeah and i remember even like when they're doing the color work for the 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 pieces and then they had it listed with movies and like that color works and it's all like down it's like a science of mm -hmm. like if you're drawn to it and and but it's kind of kind of exciting that that's there forever man i think hbo is a perfect uh platform for the film because I, I think they really love filmmaking. Yeah. And I think they love stories that 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 have broad appeal, you know, and yep. it's, and you know, I don't think they they like you know, some of these co companies are so focused on algorithms and things. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And like ba basically they've re they've reduced a human to to algorithms. I don't think HBO does that yeah. far as far as I know. Um so I I, I think Jake would have been super psyched yeah. to, so, uh, I've seen it last question what was it like working with Woody Harrelson yeah it was uh, it was kind of scary you know to, to to tell you the truth because <laughs> um, um, he he did the voiceover for the Dear Ryder sections right right and he was Jake's friend and he wasn't getting paid for the film he was doing it on 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 you know, because he loved Jake and he and he wanted to be a part of the film, and so we did the voiceover. Obviously, all done remotely. And the first one, he had just come back from surfing, and, and he was in his uh, in his, I guess, closet studio at 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 his house, and he was very gracious. <laughs> but uh, it was also the first time that I directed uh, an actor, like yeah. uh, especially an actor of his caliber, <laughs> right? I mean. Uh, so I was very intimidated, right? And, yeah. and, and, 
And we just kind of, it was this very strange session that was really fast. And I didn't do my job very well, right? I, and it didn't sound great. And I, I, I was like, this isn't going to work. Oh, my God. We, we, like, do we get a Jake sound alike? I mean, what are we going to do? Um, and Ben Bryan's like, we got to give it another shot. Yeah. We got to give it another shot. So, um, you know, I remember um, <laughs> I, one of the, uh, the tech guys, he, you know, we were, we were like talking about some, some tech issues. And he's like, listen, these actors, you just got to get after them, man. You just got to like tell them what to do and like pick your moments. Yeah. And, you know, like, okay, <laughs> thanks for that. Yeah. But I'm the one that's going to be sitting there, right? Yeah. And, um, but uh, I, I prepared in a different way. The second time oh yeah and and i did a temp a temp vo session with an, an actor friend of mine and i got it to the point where i knew i knew what the tonality needed better needed like the to be. cadence or the yeah well the intentions of what he's saying like okay. what, what what's the most important what's the message you know where where jake is at this particular point in his yeah. life when 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 he's um when he's um reading these these intros these catalog intros and um I, I was I was better prepared, I was and being better prepared made it so I was more confident. Yeah, yeah. Right, and but I kind of went into Rain Man mode with him, you, you, you know, and and you were going line <laughs> by line by line. We go, we're gonna go line by line, and he's like line by line. And he's yeah. like, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and because the first time he just like blasted through yeah. the, the the whole thing, and I'm like, cool, that's great. Now let's go back to the beginning, yeah. and you're like line <laughs> by line. So when he when it was finished. Right after the whole thing, he got his headphones and he threw them down. Right, and he's like, he's like, uh, you know, in, in a very non-subtle way, letting oh, me yeah. know that the session was over. Yeah, okay. You know, he's like not, threw them down yeah. and like, and then and then me and Ben are like, oh shit, I think he's pissed yeah. off. Right, and then, but he had come around to the to the to the other booth and and he was back to being Woody, like oh, smiling. Yeah. He was yeah. like, it's all right, guys. But in he made it very clear that that was it. Yeah. What you guys yeah, got yeah, is yeah, what you guys yeah, are getting, yeah. right? And um, but um, he was very, very generous. Yeah. And with his time and with, and in the end, you know, he really did channel Jake. Yeah, and, for and, sure. And and I, you know, that was a learning experience for me, for sure. And um, and I, I think uh, Jake's voice, Jake's voice, sorry. And I think that Woody ended up working better than I even thought it could. Yeah. You know? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you, Fern. Fern turn. Fern turn. Turn three. It's Fern turn and my turn. So thanks, pal. Thanks, Coxie. <laughs>